Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. If you've made it here, it means that you might just love ISO standards as much as I do and are truly interested and possibly excited about learning more about them. Well, you have come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 8.1.2, eliminating hazards and reducing OH&S risks. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organization system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. Keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. This clause gets straight into the requirements and gives us a nice list to work with and states that the organization shall establish, implement and maintain a process for the elimination of hazards and reduction of OH&S risks using the following hierarchy of controls. A. Eliminate the hazard. B. Substitute with less hazardous processes, operations, materials or equipment. C. Use engineering controls and reorganization of work. D. Use administrative controls, including training. E. Use adequate personal protective equipment. And that is the entire clause. So that leaves us with breaking these down and understanding what each of them mean and how they work together. I remember this hierarchy by using this little saying in my head, every Saturday eat a pie. So every is eliminate, Saturday is substitute, you could use Sunday too, eat is engineering, A is administration and pi is PPE. Try it and see if it works for you. The hierarchy of control is called a hierarchy because each control is considered less effective than the one before it. It is common to combine several controls to manage OH&S risks to an acceptable level. This means when determining what controls to put in place, start from the first in the list and then work your way down. Therefore, number one is eliminate the hazard. This means remove it by not using hazardous chemicals, removing mobile plants such as forklifts from certain areas, eliminate monotonous work or remove a piece of equipment that causes injury or ill health. In some instances, this is achievable. However, if it is not, move to number two option of substitution, which is about replacing the hazardous chemicals with less hazardous, changing slippery floor material to non-slip, or lowering voltage requirements for equipment. The next option in the hierarchy is number three, use engineering controls and reorganization of work, or both, of course. This option could be isolating people from the hazard, machine guarding installed, ventilation systems installed, noise monitoring and reduction, guardrails when working at height, ensure workers are not working alone, managing work hours and workloads. You can see with this option that you could implement these controls in parallel with elimination or substitution. Then number four is administrative. These controls are normally training, inspections, licenses, signage, and even health and wellness programs. And finally, number five is PPE, which of course is personal protective equipment. PPE includes clothing, safety shoes, safety glasses, hearing protection or gloves, as well as training and instructions on when, where, and how to wear or use the PPE. And once again, you can use these administrative and PPE controls in combination with the higher level controls. We should never just use these lower level controls if there is an option to eliminate, substitute or engineer. Simply work through the hierarchy top to bottom and determine the relevant controls at each level for the OH&S risk you have identified. And I'm not saying the first time you do this, you'll get it 100% right, because there is always an option to improve and change. You should continue to review the controls, monitor what's working and what's not working and making improvements. 
finally, all of these actions, reviews and implementation of controls need to have your workers participating in the process. This means your workers should be asked for their input and be part of the final decision making process. Please do not forget this very important part of the process as when you involve your workers, you have a higher chance of success. Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these requirements in your own management system? Thank you so much for joining me. Clearly, you are truly dedicated to learning more about ISO standards. I love having you learn with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.